All right, good morning, good afternoon. So, um, I completely blanked that there was three tanks I was meant to talk about as well. I forgot about them. So, uh, Warlord Joint, I do not own him, unfortunately. Uh, I do think he has some potential, but he's a little hard to get, so I don't really think he's worth it. As the heroes I was talking about, you can easily obtain them. But what makes Warlord actually good is that he's immune to control effects and his ultimate, he can do a lot of stunning, he has a great amount of damage, he has ability to give himself and allies shield. He is a giant, so he pairs up with Hercules with his skin, so he gains immunity when he has to control effects when he has high HP and an attack bonus. Uh, his Each of his basic attacks will bash enemies in front of him and reduce the physical attack, which is actually pretty good. And then at the beginning of the battle, he is immune to knock back and resist damage for a uh, certain amount of time. It would be nice if this was increased, so it wouldn't be just only at the beginning of the battle. Uh, whenever he pops his ultimate, for example, it would be activated again. It would make him really, really strong. Another hero that we forgot to talk about was... Ocean Princess. Where is Ocean Princess? Now, for some reason, I thought she had ice shackles. Like, one of her skills would shackle enemies and prevent them from moving. Uh, now, reading over her skills again, I don't think she actually has that. She does have water dungeon, which can trap enemies. Uh, they're not allowed to escape, which is kind of the ice shackles I was thinking of. But I legitimately thought she had the same ice shackles as uh, Team Master and... Uh, oh, sorry, Terror... Taoist Master and... Uh, I don't... I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, he's one of the mages which we're going to be showcasing tomorrow uh, when we discuss about great hero, great mages to build. We'll be discussing that tomorrow. But uh, she also has the ability to steal enemies, magic resistance, and armor. If this was even better, if it stole a lot more, then it'd probably be really good. It doesn't say how much it steals. Uh, but when you get her awakened to... <clears throat> what is that? 14? 15. It increases it and the one thing sucks is whenever it's when the battle starts she comes in surfing with the shield so she automatically comes into the battle with the shield but she is also falls under the deep sea category i think so she gains the benefits of the mermaid totem so she wouldn't be bad for that um ultimate does okay damage she's definitely a glass cannon as a comment pointed out because she does do die she does die quickly but I think with an artifact, when she gets one, she will actually be pretty good. Uh, and she also does have a skin. The other hero I was thinking of was Fist of Annihilation. His Haymaker makes it so he actually reduces the damage done to him from the front. His, ult his fourth skill, combined with his ultimate, is very deadly for any hero that's weak. Like a If they're like 25% health or less, like if you come into like a Crusade match... And he's on the enemy team and he's a high level awakened. He will murder whoever is at low HP. And then he'll start dealing a lot of damage to that whole team. Um, and it also prevents him from moving and using movement skills. His ultimate also gives him in increases his physical attack. And gives him extra life still which is pretty good. Uh, we will be working on him and once we get awake him awakened all the way we'll make a video on him. Blood Cyborg is also another one that we forgot to talk about. He has potential to be really good. I fought against some really high awakened ones. I fought against like a level 14. I say high awakened. Uh, I'm never going to be able to beat a glory hero until I get glory. And I don't think glory should have ever been added. But that's besides the point. The zombie cyborg with the skin. And his skin was fully maxed too. It was 125. On, I'm not sure if it was all three. Of the polychromes, but it was the HP one, so he was very, very tanky. The only way I was able to beat him uh, was utilizing, yeah, this it was the HP one, um, utilizing Depth's Voice's skin, which turns all HP recovery into damage, which is what his ultimate does. His ultimate makes it so he recovers his HP. Is it his ultimate? Oh no, it's Rotten Flesh Rebuild. That's what it is. Uh, I thought it was this ultimate for some reason. Oh no, that's another hero I'm thinking of. That's Blo uh, Bloody Tyrants. Uh, Bloody Tyrants actually not a bad hero either. Um, we have Bloody Tyrant. We also have Terror Gluttony. Curse Knight would be good with an artifact. Yeah. 
Curse Knight would actually be very, very hard to kill with an artifact. Because once I get high level, <laughs> good luck killing him. Because he actually has the potential to be really good if they rework his legendary skill to instead of every minute, it would be like every 30 seconds or so. So you could pop it three times during the battle. That would actually be really, really good. Uh, he also reduces all damage done to him with his ultimate, with his absolute defense. Uh, this one, which reduces all incoming damage by almost 50%. And when you get him awakened higher, it's even more. Battle Shout makes it so he stuns. Uh, sorry, he shouts and makes them all target him, increasing his armor greatly. And then, of course, he has the stunning effect, which is the he will hold his sh shield at an enemy of the highest attack power, damaging and stunning them. Uh, he used to be actually really good, but he fell off. But now he's able to be awakened. We did make a video on him being awakened. But we're going to go to Crusade after this. Um, those are heroes I forgot about. Terror Gluttony is a hero I have with the skin. What makes him good is his Devour. Uh, he can take out in a really annoying tank right out the beginning of the battle unless they have uh, Virgo which he can count he can't counter uh, but he's a very much a glass cannon so he needs to stay alive within the time he has that I'm probably gonna switch out his his uh, astrolobe to Libra so whenever he does get low he actually is immune to damage and he recovers with his uh, body of pride. Or is it body? No, it's with a skin, right? Yeah, it's with his skin. It makes it so it increases the duration of his devour and he recovers HP. The effect will be doubled if he has his ultimate. Uh, he's actually not really that bad of a tank. If I level him up more, he has the potential to be very strong. But we'll leave him at 3 for now. I would like to see him at uh, max level. But okay, let's go to Crusade. Uh, sorry for the last seven minutes have been that. We'll do another run after this. This is a team that I have trouble against because Milka Feather is amazing and we almost have her. So we're going to be working on her. Uh, skin, we only need what? We have 120 fragments right now. And we still have advanced skin tokens enough to grab, I think, one more set of 40 or maybe two more. Let me. We'll check after this. Uh, we did lose Monster Hunter. Uh, I was making a video on this earlier, but my recording stuff kept messing up. I had to go check out, sort it out, and we fixed it. I'm going to turn everyone invisible. <clears throat> and now it's going to be a lot of damage done to the enemy team now. Oh yeah, that's so good. Turn everyone invisible again. You know, Cloudwalker's a hero that I should awaken higher. Um... I feel like he does have the potential to be really annoying. This is going to be an unfun fight in the next one. We do have most of everyone's ultimates, but I already know who we're going against. Uh, subscriber was telling me that he did have to fight <laughs> me in Crusade, and he would like to see more Crusade videos, so that's why we're doing Crusade today. Yeah, so there's another guy after this that's actually been really tough to beat. We might lose Sapper. Uh, we might lose to Sapper right here. We'll lose a hero or two from Sapper because he does kind of be annoying. So we'll see right now. Alright, we're going to activate the ultimates of everyone here. Turn everyone invisible to so Sapper's. Unfortunately, forced to go back here. Oh, yeah, wow. Um, tch. Queen of Sea Dragon. I forgot about her. She could not be in the middle of that. <sighs> As I was saying before, I got really interrupted uh, by the recording software. I thought it was fixed. Does not seem to be fixed. I mean, it did last 10 minutes before it crashed. There was like five different crashes beforehand. I was trying to make a video earlier today. Now this is going to be the final team. This actually looks terrifying because of that Queen of Sea. And he has an Iron Hoth. Actually, can be very troublesome. Uh, you know what? Let's see. He has Matchless Hammer, which can make himself immune to control effects. Ember Star, you know... 
Hmm, wait. Where's the hero I'm looking for? You know it, yeah. We're gonna use <clears throat> Nature Storm. Nature Storm's great at shutting down teams that can be annoying. She might die to Queen of Sea when she goes over there unless she can freeze Queen of Sea fast enough and then the rest of my team cleans up. Worst case scenario, we have to bring in a second team or reset. We'll see. Oh, why is she so fragile? She should have not taken that much damage. Wow. Uh, <laughs> wow. Emerald Mage is terrifying. Just absolutely terrifying. Look at that damage. 1.5. Jesus Christ. Okay. We'll do one more Crusade one. Um, I normally don't like actually doing it like this, but we'll do it anyways. We just like to raid it usually. Take out you, put back in Monster Hunter. This is definitely my Crusade team for right now. You can sub out Monster Hunter and Ancient Lamp Genie if you don't have them. Chaplain's only good if she's awakened level 10. Uh, that's the only way she's good. Uh, she's not bad at awakened level 3 because her javelin does a good chunk of damage. She can charm an enemy, but at this level, it's great survivability. It keeps everyone alive on my team. Ancient Lamb Genie also turns everyone invisible and gives everyone the ultimates back faster. So... With Monster Hunter being the optional, because he can give everyone either immunity to magic damage or immunity to physical damage, and he uh, can also do a good chunk of damage himself. I'm going to turn invisible for everyone. Pop the ultimate of my spell's ultimate. Oh wow, he killed his own. A Scarlet Sickle, and now he's gonna die as soon as he goes from invisible. <laughs> you know, he's actually supposed to disable that physical immunity, uh, Ancient Lamp Genie, so that seems to be a bug. Interesting. Oh, this is not a fun team. He doesn't have the artifacts for these characters leveled up, so it's going to be a easy enough fight. But that team is terrifying if it was fully awakened more. Uh, with the artifacts up to like 50, 60, it would be very hard to beat them. And if he had the skin for Ashen Descent and Iron Hoof. Three, t uh, sorry, four tank team. Wait, is Ashen Descent a uh, tank? I don't think he's a tank. I think he's a front line, a mage or something like that. Alright, where's it level 70 guy, Richard? Ah, this guy can get so annoying because he could actually kill my entire team, which is crazy because he's level 70 and I just fought a level 110. Oh, Monster Hunter died again. See, it's so terrifying how strong uh, Queen of Sea Dragon is. Because he leveled her up to level 80 and focused really heavily on her for sure. Because uh, he doesn't have the training field, I don't think. No, I think. Maybe, I thought. No, you get training field at, what, level 80, I think? We can't have... Queen of Sea Dragon be the annoyance that she is. We can't turn uh, Spell Swordsman invisible. 
Because if we do, then it's kind of a bad fight for me. There you go. Yeah, we should be fine now. Yeah, okay. Why Queen of Sea Dragon is so strong is because she can do so much damage to your team when she gets actually in the middle of it because she does continuous AoE around her. Those spinning balls that you see around her. Alrighty, so sorry about that. The video keeps crashing and crashing and crashing and it's annoying because I have to rechange the volume every single time it crashes. So, uh, the video keeps crashing, this is annoying, we'll finish our crusade and then we'll be done for this video. Tomorrow we'll be making a video all about um, mages and talking about mages. There's some really great ones here. We have Ice Mage, we have Stargazer, God of Light, and Queen of Sea Dragon. And this is the first time I've actually fought this team. Uh, that Stargazer is definitely scary. Uh, do we have someone against her? Maybe. You know what? We're going to bring in a hero we don't really use much. He has potential. We'll see. Because that's a really strong magical team. Uh, not really a strong physical attacker in there. So if I can actually get him to activate his ultimate, he'll be fine. That's a hero that I might get to level 8 if he gets an artifact. With an artifact, I think Night Ranger is going to actually be really strong. Uh, for sure. Oh, what the hell? Why is everyone pushing towards him? We're going to be actually activating Night Ranger. Turn trying to have everyone invisible. Oh, we lost. Oh, wow. Um, let's reset that. What? Why was Chaplin the only one that wasn't shown invisible? That is weird as can be. Night Ranger, I think, has the potential to be a great hero. Because he has magical immunity with his ultimate. He goes into the back line when he does that. Causes rotating blades around himself. Um, he definitely does have the potential. Push everyone back. And the nice thing is with his ultimate... Uh, not his ultimate, um... With the skill right here, he actually makes it so anyone that's inside this little area around him, he can actually ch push them back. Let's activate the ultimates. Go off. Ah, we keep losing uh, Star to Stargazer right there. Oh, wow. Yeah, no. Uh, tch. Why is it being so annoying? We don't want to lose Angel Lamp Genie. We tried utilizing and someone different than our normal team did not go so well. It's okay though, we can always make adjustments as time goes on. Should be good right here. Oh, it's physical immunity, not magical immunity. Should be fine though, yeah. Night Ranger definitely needs an artifact to stay alive. Um, we'll probably give him Libra as well, so whenever he becomes a. Um, Low, he just automatically turns immune. There's that Miracle Feather team, so that means it's the Sapper team for last, I think. Wanna be. Hmm. It's definitely interesting. It's fine. Why is it Chaplin again? The physical immunity for Monster is crazy when it works in time. Uh, 
just turn everyone invisible and just do a ton of damage very fast. Oh my god, that moment is just terrifying. We just got an artifact to level 60 as well. 1.1. Oh yeah, this was a... Oh, we don't have the Sapper team anymore. This was the other team we just fought. Uh, so, yeah. It should be interesting. Should be fine to leave on auto. Watching everyone's interactions. Ooh. Okay. That came in a good time. And just Emerald Mage is doing so much damage. Now we have immunity with um, <clears throat> everyone turning physical immunity, so the only problem here right now is Emerald Stall. Which I don't think she's. No. I don't think she was going to survive. And yeah, now we won. <laughs> this team is so cracked. Alright, so that's going to be the video. We did more Crusade, you know, uh, getting everything sorted out. Talked about the heroes we were messed up on for <laughs> got talking about, so yeah, it should be fine. Uh, anyway, so that's going to be the video today. Everyone have a wonderful day, and goodbye.